Hello, YouTube. Uh, this is uh, my Sato 180 Glow engine, and uh, I converted to running on the gasoline, 25 to 1 oil and gas mixture. And uh, this engine has been sitting in the garage for about 10 years, and I decided to convert it to gas. And uh, there are a few things. I'd like you guys to know about it. First of all, it didn't cost me very much, less than $10. And the reason we say less than $10 is uh, we didn't count the cost of ignition. It just tells you about the cost of setting it all up mechanically. So this is my setup. I had this ignition, which is an old ignition, possibly about 25 to 30 years. I don't know who made it, but I think they were from Quebec. Now, somebody can put an output for me to tell me who made that in Quebec some 25 years ago. I would say around the mid 80s or early 90s, they came up with this ignition, which has an automatic advanced CDI, as later on was invented by some others in Germany and then passed on to Chinese, that they have it now. And uh, the ignition by itself is a separate, the coil is separated, and what you have now these days on the new ignitions, this coil is hiding inside in the box. So therefore, this is one of those uh, antique ignitions, possibly 25 if it's not longer. And uh, I had that there, of course, with a spark plug, everything. And I had the spark plug, which is 1432. Uh, regular spark plug that fits into the motor. So there it goes the modification we did. Besides the ignition, I modified the manifold here with uh, to fit Walboro carburetor. And uh, because of the heat that comes from the manifold and the cylinder, I decided to put a piece of 316 Teflon which keeps the heat transferred to the carburetor. As you know, Walboro carburetors, they got a lot of plastic and rubber things inside of it, and the heat is no good. So you always need the isolation between carburetor and the manifold and the engine, so the heat doesn't transfer there. That's one thing I did, which is very simple. Piece of aluminum to hold the Walboro carburetor, and the piece of Teflon that is attached through the longest screw to the aluminum here, and then the carburetor is screwed to the piece of aluminum that I have here. Now, the carburetor itself, it's uh, again another old carburetor, possibly about 20 years old from Weedwacker, which I took it out and I convert it. Now, Walboro carburetor, I will tell you a little bit more about Walboro carburetor. A lot of people, they talk about Walboro carburetor, but they don't know what they're talking about. Walboro carburetor, when it's sitting on the two cycle engine, has, I'm gonna show you with a spare one that I have here, has a little hole here that uh, it goes into the intake of two cycle engine and takes a positive and negative pressure in order to actuate the pump that it is over here. So therefore, if you don't or you cannot put this uh, hole here to the intake, then you must have another way of uh, putting positive and negative pressure into the carburetor. So therefore, you can block this hole, which you don't have to do anything to it, you just set it flat there against this aluminum. And then I actuate the carburetor from this side of Walboro carburetor, which is a standard. Most of them, they come like this. Of course, not with the nipple. The nipple, you have to make it yourself or press it in or, I don't know, thread it in. But you have to have that. Now, once you have that, then if you show it a little bit closer to here, you will see that I put a tube from here to another nipple that it goes into the intake. Of course, I could put that up here. I put that nipple, I could put it up here, but then I decided since I have enough space here, I put the nipple for the carburetor to intake, to, uh, what do you call it, to actuate the carburetor pump to work. If you don't do that, the carburetor might work, but it's not gonna be a pump carburetor, and you're, gonna, you're not gonna have a proper <coughs> transaction of fuel into the, into the engine. So therefore, the intake comes from here, and the way that it works is because of the suction that we have over here on the third stroke, 
when it comes down, it's going to actuate the carburetor, and when it comes up, it's going to close the carburetor. If you do it any other way, since it's not two cycle, as I said, if you put it down there on the crankcase, then it's not going to be on the timing of intake to for carburetor to give the fuel and stop the fuel. So this is one way that you have to do it, and I believe there is no other way to do it. I've seen some people, they're taking it from crankcase and putting it in there, but if it's a four cycle, you should not do that, taking it from crankcase. You should take it from manifold intake here. <coughs> and another thing, this carburetor, I took it from Wheatbacker, old Wheatbacker, and he has a he has an opening over here, which when they are on Wheatbacker, they put a bubble things there and they prime the the weed back here before they crank it open and uh, you must block that in my case I didn't I just block it with a little tube and a rivet on the top and it's blocked if you don't do that if you don't do that the, the carburetor not gonna work <coughs> but Walboro has carburetor that doesn't have that that you can just simply close the choke and start the engine any other thing oh the sensor the sensor, my idea of putting the sensor was very simple and straightforward. I just had a about 316 uh, by 116 aluminum, which I glued the sensor with the JB welding in here. And if you can show them, there is a, a screws on this side that I made a, just the L shape that it grabs over the, over the crankcase front and I tie it down to where I want it for the timing. And I will tell you about timing a little bit. And uh, so this setup that I glued the sensor there and I put it there, then I made a little hole right into the ball over here. Uh, you don't have to be worried about, you know, if it comes off or not. Once you JB weld it, the magnet is not gonna come out. So you gotta make a little hole the size of your magnet maybe a little bit smaller and uh, not to go too deep because this thing doesn't have much thickness so you just got to do a little touch here to make a little groove if you can say it and then with the JB welding you can put the magnet here now the setting up the timing it shouldn't be too hard I've seen a lot of people they use uh, some type of a circle with a degree or whatever device they're going to use the setting up a timing it's not hard what you got to do that you have to bring the crankshaft to the top dead center and you mark it which is the center over here now my way of doing it is very simple I have the mark over here then I put a mark over here and between this mark and this mark I have 90 degree so I divide it and I put a mark in half then I have 45 degree and since we want to set up our uh, ignition to fire at about something between 28 to 32 degree before top dead center, then I kind of manage it. Let's say I start with about 35 degree before top dead center. Then I gradually, as you know, I can move my sensor. I move it upward, which I'm going to advance it, or I move it the other way which I retarded. So in my case, I started at about 35 to 40 degree, which was somewhere around here when the magnet fires. Then I didn't like it. Then I kept moving my sensor, not the magnet. Magnet is all once you set it up, it's set. So uh, I keep moving that till I get the right uh, firing, which as you can see, it is going to be very nice and easy. So. Uh, I think we are done with the carburetor, Walboro carburetor. It's very important to know all these things about Walboro carburetor. Walboro carburetor is a great carburetor and uh, very complicated inside of it and has diaphragm. <clears throat> this is where the pump actuated. Actually under here, there is a pump and there is a needle that moves up and down. That has to breathe properly through this hole, which should not be faced toward the propeller. It means, in other words, the propeller should not hit through this air here. That's another thing for our hobby, of course. For otherwise, uh, it's all different way. And the ignition and 1432 spark plug. And uh, that's it. 
I did it and it's